So hello everybody and welcome back and today we're going to be continuing the top down shooter tutorial and today we're going to be working on the enemy coming in um, you can see that the enemies are already here and since last time I have I forgot to save so I'm just going to quickly finish that um, remake it and all and um, that's it so let's get started this video is brought to you guys by Circle Rally Party Circle Rally Party is a 1 to 4 player local multiplayer game where with mini games doing donuts with cars. Anyway, use your car's unique attack at the right time and collect power ups to improve your odds. So I was the alpha playtester for this game and I really loved it. Um, I played it myself because um, it's a party game and I don't have external controllers. But it's a pretty good game. It's coming out on Steam soon in April. And if you go to the link description, I have put the Steam um, link in the description. You can wishlist it now, and when it's out, you can always buy it and support the developer. The developer and I, we know each other from Discord, and we both decided to do a small giveaway where one lucky guy or gal will win the giveaway key for this game. So all you have to do is join the Discord's community server for his game, which is in the description below. And comment in the video below something like I want the giveaway key or something. Alright. And then that's it. One lucky person will get the key. Let's get back to the video. So um, we have nothing on the scene because I forgot to save. So I'm going to quickly redo that. But it's not going to take too long. And just going to scale that up. And down. I've decided that we're going to go back to the original shooting because I named it Top Down Shooter and it's more like a Top Down Knifer, I guess. So we're going to just be doing the shooting and maybe the enemy movement th today so that we know that it, there, you can actually shoot. So I'm going to duplicate the enemy and I'm going to remove that because I, I was working on this a few times. I mean, not a few times. I was working on this. I recorded the video and I lost the audio file, so I had to redo everything. But here we are. So I want to rename this to something like bullet and rename file. This is going to be the bullet from now on. I'm going to add a circle collider 2D. I'm going to lower the radius a bit to something like this. And then put it on trigger. That's it. And then you go in here, go to new sprite. And then you want to go over here and click C sharp script. You want to type um, player, so you can just sh shoot, all right? That's all I have to put in. Shoot, and then you want to go into the top-down shooter tutorial, and it's on my second monitor. After I reload solution, I'll bring it in. And it's loaded. I'm going to bring it in here. Go to shoot, and then what you want to do for, whoops, you want to mention what the game object is. So you want to go in, get public game object ammunition or something like that or like bullet or something you want to go to void update hang on let me just save that something I did before void update and then you want to put in if input dot get key down that means I'm not gonna put in rapid fire it's gonna be every time you click it's gonna shoot one out key code dot space instantiate ammunition at transform that position so the current player's position oh wait no you're not supposed to do that so I forgot to add the fire port but you're gonna need a fire port so it's public public transform fire port and you're gonna have to spawn it in the fire port dot transform dot position because it's already a transform and then Fireport dot rotation because you don't want it to be zero zero zero. You just gotta change all the time. So after you do that, you wanna save it and go back. The first thing we wanna do is add a fireport so, so that it can actually start shooting. Or it's gonna give us a huge error about how it's not there. So I'm gonna go to new sprite or whatever we call it. It's kind of like a gun. So you wanna click new sprite. I'm just gonna put in a gizmos here so that I can know better where it is. And just wait a bit because it's not loading. Okay, and then you want to drag this up somewhere here. There we go. And then now, if I remembered, which I didn't, is to drag this into the player's shoot script, which I didn't apply either. So over here, fireport is the game object here. 
we sh I should really learn to rename these. And then the bullet is right here. Awesome. So now we, if we can hit play, and the movement should still work. And like I thought, movement still works. And yep, spawns at this huge thing right there. The only thing that's not moving is because we didn't apply anything to the bullet to make it move. So we're going to do that right now. So, and the bullet's a bit big, to be honest. Let's turn that down a bit. So currently it's at 7.7. .7. We want to turn that down to like 3 and 3. It's just a lot smaller. Because the current sprite is like 4 and 4. Let's, let's increase that a bit. Maybe decrease the size of this. There we go. After that, you want to um, go to the bullet script. You want to put in, put in something like, I don't know, like shoot out or something. So name whatever you want. This is all optional. Like names are all whatever you want. Go back. I'm just going to reload solution. Maybe you don't have to do that on yours. Maybe you do. After you do, you want to go to the script you just made and then put in one variable, which is a public, f oh, whoops. A public float variable speed and that's all you need I'm just gonna yeah and then in the void update method you're gonna put in transform dot translate vector two dot up this can vary like sometimes if you put up it won't work so I just usually start with up to see which way it goes if it's right then I don't have to care if it's wrong then I just adjust it because there's only four different directions in vector two and you want to put in speed and time dot delta time and then so in the shootout script you see that there's a speed um, variable you want to set that something quick like 10 so that it can just zoom right past and then if we hit play it should start moving and over here you can see that it moves Perfect. So we had the spawner, I believe, but we didn't assign it. I'm going to assign to the player this spawner script because it's going to spawn at the player's position. And the enemy is right there. So every three seconds, it just spawns at a radius of around 20. Around it. You want to go into the scene view. I'm going to drag this game view right here. Something like this. And then I'm just going to go rotate around. So currently, the enemy is spawning outside. And we want it to go towards the player so that you can start attacking it and it can start attacking you. And this script is surprisingly easy. So all you have to do is go to the enemy game object and create a script called enemy, which I have created already, but I deleted it so that I can make this video again. I want to go back, reload the solution, and just wait a bit and then you'll see that there's a script called enemy so the first thing you want to do you want to put in a private game object called player or target or something the only reason this is a private game object or I'm gonna put it as transform is because you're spawning this from a prefab and prefabs don't recognize um, these assets from the hierarchy so you're gonna have to assign it the second it's spawned so at the void start method you want to put in, whoops, player is equal to get component, nope, game object dot find object with tag, player, and then there's a reason there's an error, normally if it's a game object it wouldn't matter, but if it's, there's an error because it's a transform, so at the end you want to put in dot transform so that it resolves the error. So the next thing you want to do is void update, and I forgot a variable, I'll put that right now, a public float variable called speed. This is the speed of the um, enemy. I'm going to put in transform the position is equal to vector2 dot move towards transform the position and then player dot position at speed times time dot delta time. And this should make the current enemy the enemy go towards the player. You should have no problem. And at the same time, since it's the enemy script, this will also include the health, health and stuff. 
So I'm going to do that right now. Public float health. Oops, gel. Health. And then um, over here, I want to put in something like public void. Die. Which just destroys the game object. And over here in update, you want to put in if health is less than or equal to zero, you want to put in die, so that it dies. And then over here in the shootout script, you're gonna put in void, on trigger enter, 2D, because it's a 2D object, collider, 2D, other, if other, this, ver this variable right here, that compare tag is equal to enemy, you make it um, decrease some enemies. So you're going to put an other not game object dot get component enemy and you want to access the script. So you're going to put in something like enemy enemy is equal to other dot game object get component enemy. All right. And that enemy something like minus equal enemy dot health is minus minus equal like something like f 10 or five, because I'm gonna put the maximum health to 10. So I have to shoot it twice. And that should work. I just want to put this in here right now so that I don't have to worry about later. 10, this speed can be something like two. So that it's a bit slower than the player. And if you go back now, everything should be working. Except the enemy won't be following the player because the player does not have the player script right now, the player tag, unless I did put it there. But I did not, so I'm gonna put in the player. And that should make it all work. I'm gonna just hit play. And as soon as it starts, I'm gonna change back to scene view to check if it's, if, because this time it has a collider and everything seems to be normal. Last time you weren't able, the ammunition weren't able to check for the things. Yep, see, now it's destroyed. If you go to the next enemy, it's destroyed. It's also destroyed, just like that. So now the health system, enemy, and the gun system is all completed in this episode. The next episode should be simple. We're going to take look out for some particle systems because the main part is all complete. Maybe a player health system. I'm not sure yet. Tell me in the description. No, not the description. The comment below and tell me what you think should come next. Maybe the, if you think it should be the player, tell me. If you think it should be polish and particles, please tell me as well. That is it for this week's video. This should be a bit longer than usual, but I haven't edited it yet, but it should be a bit longer. If you guys liked it, be sure to like the video. If you want to continue watching this series or wa want to continue to watch other tutorials I make, be sure to hit subscribe, hit the bell button to know when I get when I even upload those. And if you guys want to support me, you guys can go to patreon.com slash indie underscore eclipse and support me there. You guys can follow me on Twitter, which is um, in the description below or at Indie Eclipse YT, I believe. I can't remember these. You guys can join the Discord server to check out everything that's going on. It's not very active, but I'm ha hoping to jazz it up. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys want to look at, watch the previous video, you guys can click the box on the bottom left corner, I believe. Or maybe right. I'm not sure. I made this like a week ago. But anyway, you guys can check out one of the videos on one of the corners. Right on top of that should be the subscribe button. You guys can always click that. Always helpful. And all the other instructions are right beside it. I'll see you guys in the next video.